Greetings from a rather cold, damp, not exactly exciting day in Galveston, Texas. Uh, not sitting outside this morning because it's too damp to sit outside. But it's been a, kind of a busy, wonderful, beautiful week down here. Uh, Ted Campbell, who's a Methodist minister and a professor, is going to be joining with OCCA in Dallas to work with the people at the new parish there and maintain his Methodist ministry, uh, not taking anything away from that in any way, shape, or form, but allowed himself to accept a conditional sub condizione ordination from myself this last week here in Galveston so that he would be able to validly offer the sacraments. It's one of those weird things that, that churches get all hung up over you know, whose hand was placed on who, by what time. And some of the churches uh, are not as thrilled with some of the other churches' lines of descent. So we conditionally ordained Father Ted uh, into our jurisdiction so that hand on head goes back to Balat, and from Balat back to India, and from India back to Syria, so that we have that same continuity all the way through. But he's not going to be an OCCA member He's going to be an ecumenical minister working with us. And those of you who know OCCA well know that we are more than willing to work with people from other jurisdictions. That, uh, that's been one of the hallmarks of, of what we've done for so many years. It's partly what I do here in Galveston. Uh, I don't have my own parish. I work with our local Serbian parish, singing with them, having a wonderful time. It's been a, been a great experience for us. So we would ask for all of your prayers and blessings on now Father Ted as, as he approaches a new part of ministry in his life and an expansion of something that he's always been interested in, which is the traditional ancient rites of the church. And it's funny, every time we talk about those, I end up with people who say, oh yes, there's the East and the West. Not so much. When you talk about Eastern Orthodoxy, and Roman Catholicism, you're really talking about things that happened inside the empire. There's that, that wonderful flag that you'll see that has the double eagle on it, and one head faces east and one head faces west, and that was for the two halves of the empire, the Greek-speaking half and the Roman-speaking half. And when we talk about that, we're really talking about the Church of Rome, Latin-speaking, and the Church of Constantinople, and all of the other churches of that part of the empire, which were Greek-speaking. Uh, I, I refer to those as Byzantine, because Byzantium was Constantinople back in the day, and all of those Byzantine-derived jurisdictions. Now, outside of the empire was something different, and they considered that Oriental, you know, to the east, outside. And that includes a lot of churches that uh, we've had dealings with in the past, and of course, from where OCCA derives its own apostolic succession in the Syrian Orthodox Church from India. That gets confusing to some people, but it was, it was pretty much political back in the day. You know, we have the Romans working under Rome, the Byzantine working under Byzantium, Constantinople, and then everybody else who was outside of the, of the borders of the empire. And that's, that's where we fall. And the liturgies develop differently, but the theology is pretty much the same. Why do I say pretty much? Well, the Romans do, went on to define some things differently, and the Byzantines went on to define some things differently, and they got to head-to-head -to -head with each other, you know, back in 1052, and went, and all of those issues. Well, we weren't a part of any of that because way back in the 4th century, they went, uh, y'all go away. So, our basic fundamental beliefs go back to the earliest church. We're a church of the three councils. Uh, do we really hassle people who are churches of the seven councils? No. Do we hassle them whether they think of the seven councils the way the Byzantines do or the seven councils the way the Romans do? No. It's, it's just not really that much of an issue for us. We're a lot more open in our understandings of the ways that God has worked in our lives. And that's really what it amounts to when we're talking about theology and when we're talking about liturgical traditions. We're talking about the way 
God has worked in the lives of people in a particular place, in a particular time. So here we live in the 21st century, 2,000 years later. Is it all going to be exactly the same? I sure hope not. I, I hope that we've learned an awful lot in the intervening years, that we've observed things, that we've learned things, that we've grown, that we've realized different things than we knew 2,000 years ago. Uh, every so often, a church sort of peels itself away and locks itself into a particular time frame. Probably the most famous of those here in the United States are the Amish, who as Anabaptist, that's a whole other story, uh, they, they tied themselves to a time frame from more than a hundred years ago. And there's not a real problem with that, but there's not a modernity to them at the same time. If it works, there's no problem with that. You know, we have no we have no issues with the Amish, but we can see that they have chosen a particular place and time in history to retain. So what are we looking for as OCCA in the future? To become closer to God. Isn't that what this is all about? Isn't that why we do the things that we do? Why we pray? Why we sit in silence? Why we open ourselves to the scriptures? Is to learn. In orthodoxy, you'll hear the term theosis a number of times. Theosis, to become like God. Now, it's not that we are going to become the creators of the universe, but we want to be the best person that we can be so that what we do becomes better. Every single day, we look to be a better person than we were the day before. Lots of times I fail on that one. I'm sure lots of us can say that. I'm not as, not as much of a better person as I wish I was. Some days I get better. That's what the road's all about, isn't it? To become the best child of God that we can possibly be, the best person that we can possibly be. So welcome Father Ted and all of the other wonderful people who make up this ragtag, ragamuffin group. And let us each, in our own way, follow Christ, and become the best person that we can be. In the name of our God, who is creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen.